Good morning. It's about 4 a.m. June the 5th, 2024. And I've been getting up early with the Lord. And He's been meeting with me. And um, I wanted to take y'all through um, the beginning of the reading in red. Yesterday I released a video that the Lord wanted us to read um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, read everything that's written in red, and he wanted us to start it today, and he wants us to do it for 30 days, and then he's going to uh, make visitation with us during that time. He wants us to get Jesus down inside of us, and um, it expels uh, the bad, and so this morning... When I started reading in Matthew, it starts in chapter 4. When you first start seeing the red, the first scripture it says, Suffer it to be, so for now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. You just keep reading in red. He told me, he said, don't go back and, you know, read why he said that. Just keep going. And so the next scripture, he says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, when he said that, he was talking to Satan. Now, check this out. He does this three times. He uses the three, I call it the three-stranded cord of Ecclesiastes, is how you bind the enemy. You use three scriptures on the enemy. Now, some enemies will flee if you just use one scripture, like 2 Timothy 4.18 you can just use that one scripture if you're trying to quit smoking. That is, but um, for other things, uh, we use three scriptures on Satan. So just by reading Matthew, written in red, uh, obeying what God told me yesterday, by us obeying this and doing it, and not only did he want this for y'all, he wants me to do it as well. We automatically see immediately that he says, suffer it so to be so for now. For thus it is us to fulfill righteousness. And then we see Jesus Christ. He loses three scriptures against Satan. Straight off in Matthew. Written in red. So we're going to loose those scriptures. And as we're loosing these. He said that it's going to bind Satan. Off of your life. Immediately this morning. So let's do it. Off my life too. Um, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now we've bound Satan. Listen what the next verse is. Verse 5. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we're going to do that. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I repent for the people. I stand in the gap for them. And as they're listening to the video, all they have to do is agree and say, Yes, Lord, we repent. We lay everything down at Jesus' feet. We forgive all men who have hurt us, all of our abusers. We forgive them. We forgive those wicked ones, uh, men. Now, I'm not talking about demons and devils. We do not forgive demons and devils. We do not forgive Satan. Uh, but we forgive people, the people who have hurt us, Lord. We release them out of their debts. And uh, we lay all of our inequities, all of our sin, our inequity, that's long unrepented sin, all of our deceits, and all of our rebellions, which is with, as witchcraft. We lay this down at your feet. And we also remit up the sins for our spouses, for our children, for our family members, and our friends. We remit their sins up as well. And we ask you don't judge them or us based on our sins deserve but cover us under jesus's blood we confess christ as lord and we renounce satan this morning now lord the sun has not even came up yet you told me jesus that the assignments of satan goes out when the sun comes up that his kingdom the kingdom of darkness their assignments go that you have a bind on them, that they're not allowed to lose assignments for the next day until the sun comes up. So even if they lose assignment right now at 4 a.m. while it's dark, it will not, it will, it will cancel out by morning. It will not take the new day. So right now, Jesus, we come before, before anything has been loosed for this new day. 
And we ask you, Lord, to activate these scriptures that we have activated, that um, he will not be able to tempt us, and that he has to worship you as well. It says, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That he has to obey you. He has to worship you. And he's not allowed to tempt us today. Yeah, because the scripture said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You live inside of us, and now he's not allowed to tempt us on today. And, and then also we ask you to, to feed us with that bread of heaven on today. So we repent for our sins and we enter into thine kingdom. And now we read, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. And now we read, follow me and I will make you. Follow me, he says. He says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But we're going to say that he told me to say it like this. Follow me and I will make you. Yes, Lord, make us, remake us. Now we'll go to chapter 5. We're only going to do chapter 5 this morning. And he said this is an example for you to know how to do this each day over the next 30 days. He wants you to take time out of each day to read the scriptures because it's going to change your life. You believe this, don't you? Don't you believe all things in Christ Jesus? We have to believe all things in Christ Jesus. And I forgive me for how crazy my hair looks. I just got to... I just woke up and um, I made some coffee. Thank you for the coffee, Lord. Okay, let's go forward. We're only reading in red now. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn for that. Now, he says to stop right there. He wants us to confess this as if it's for us. So, Lord, we say, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and now we receive the kingdom of heaven by faith blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and lord we shall be comforted now blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth O oh lord we are the meek we shall inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled and we decree and declare that we are hungering and thirsting for righteousness and now we are being filled blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. And we say, Lord, we are the merciful. And now we shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. And we decree and declare that we are the pure in heart. Lord, cleanse our heart. Make it pure. We claim this morning that we shall be the pure in heart. And we shall see God face to face. We decree it. We declare it. And we loose it to go forth now. I feel the fire of God on me. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of Almighty God. And I decree and declare we are the peacemakers. And we are the children of Almighty God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I decree and declare blessed are, the, are thou. For you have been persecuted for his righteousness sake. And the kingdom of heaven is yours. I decree it. I lose it. Lord you said whatsoever I lose. You shall lose it from heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The living waters are just pouring out of my mouth. I'm just having to drink them down. And I say, yes, Lord, we are the blessed. And men have been reviling us and they have been persecuting us. And they've been saying all manner of evil against us falsely. And we are rejoicing and we're exceedingly glad for great is our reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before us. Hallelujah, Lord. We know that we're receiving these blessings from you for being persecuted for your name's sake. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his savor, where will it shall it be salted? It is that's good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. So right now he wanted me to take that where the salt was. Now we confess we are salty for the Lord. This means we are flavorful, full of flavor. And men will want to eat what we dish out because we are salty in the Lord. Now I don't know everything that means, but he told me to loose that, so I did it. Um... We are the light of the world. 
Yes, we are the light of the world because Jesus lives inside of us. He's the light of all men and he's the light of the world. But we are the light of the world also because he lives in us. And that's what the scripture says. Verse 14, we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But they put the candle up on the candlestick and it gives light unto all those that are there in that house. So now we shall let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. He said, so we decree and declare today we are the light of the world and we shall shine bright. We shall shine bright because Jesus is in us and we, right now, Father, we confess, we invite you, Father, in and we invite Jesus in and we invite the Holy Spirit in to be in our vessel and to shine through us now turn our light lord you hold the fan in your hand and we ask you to fan our flame fan that little light that's inside of us and fill us with that oil holy spirit to give fuel to light this fire that's in our belly think not that i'm come to destroy the law and if you really check that out it really means the the word of god is what it means it don't mean law in a bad way it means really the the whole complete word of god think not that i'm come to destroy this the law or the the, the whole word of god or to destroy the prophets do you think he's going to destroy us no he says i'm not come to destroy not the law not the word nor us but to fulfill, to fulfill everything. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot, that means an, like a little a dot in the eye, or one tittle, that means like a little asterisk mark. Not one of these shall pass away from the word, from the law, till all be fulfilled. So we decree and declare, Lord, that we want you to fulfill your word to us. Your word is a law unto our uh, path. It's a lamp to our feet. We continually meditate on the word of, of, of thy, the law of thy word. For, for it is life to those that find it, Father. So we ask you to fulfill your law, which is your word, in us. For we are living epistles being written. And we ask you, Jesus, to put your word in us now. Now, I've got to stop right now and I've got to pray because I can feel something coming against the headship of God. I don't know what it is, but there's either a fourth head trying to rule or there is a principality. There's a principality over that's trying to rule. And so right now, let's enter into prayer right now. Well, yes, the enemy will come out when we're trying to to uh, look it's already going away just me praying in tongues like that but the enemy will come out trying to destroy god's works as we're doing it because this is faith with works what we're doing anytime you read the word and loose it you were doing faith with works you were doing the first works that jesus commanded us to do anything to do with loosening his word is the first works don't you doubt it it is the first works it is entering into christ and him entering into us we are supping together with him we are learning how to fill ourselves up with christ and expel the bad okay he's the light of the world and we are lit in him by him look at all that left so fast just like that by me just praying that two little tongue like that it's just god is so awesome i praise you lord i praise you okay um Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men to break them too, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do the, these commandments and teach others to do likewise, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Well, we decree and declare, Almighty God, that we keep your commandments and we also tell others around us to keep your commandments. We are not going to hide the truth or the light before men we will keep your commandments and we will tell others to keep your commandments for there is great worth in keeping your commandments for those that keep your commandments you make your bow with them for those that keep your commandments you give them favor with god and with man with those that keep your commandments you bless them and open the windows of heaven 
you pour us out blessings that we cannot even contain so yes we shall keep your commandments for we are the children of god hallelujah I call down the kingdom of heaven right now for us keeping your commandments, Father. It is, and I hear the Lord saying right now, he, I can see it in the spirit. It is a wall that surrounds us. You know how Jesus' blood surrounds us? Keeping God's commandments is a wall. It is a barrier of protection that cannot be penetrated. If we keep God's commandments, witches can't even send a curse against us. Did you know that? The causeless curse cannot alight because we keep God's commandments. The only way witches can infiltrate your home and witchcraft is if we live in sin if we live in active sin and even if you are living in sin if you'll repent of your sins seven times 70 every day every time you sin you go straight to god and confess every time i used to smoke i would do that while i was smoking i'd say oh god forgive me but as soon as i get down i'd say lord it, forgive me and i fear the i feel the fire of god come on me and burn it up like that he did that Every time I smoked, I'd smoke 25 or 35 cigarettes a day, and he would burn those up. Every time I'd repent, he would burn it up. I felt the fire. You know how the, the scripture says some will be saved as though through fire. And so uh, many of us that have entered into our eternal works, like everything I do now is eternally kept. It is eternal because I'd already died and went to the judgment and had to stand before God and I was already judged. I've already went through death. He's already raised me, resurrected me from the dead. And so now everything I do is eternal. And that's just the way it is. It, it's good or it's bad. Either way, it's eternal. So if I do what is wrong, that's the reason I can't lie to you guys. If I start lying and telling lies, the Lord sends a harsh judgment in my belly. It'll come in through that belt of truth that is broken. And um, the beast, the mark of the beast, the, where the where the, like sin will try to enter in, the DNA of Satan would try to get in me. And that worm would start trying to grow where the worm dieth not. And so he, um, you know, he's changed me to where I can't sin against him. That's the reason I say I know that we can live sin free. I know it. I pray you listen to me. I pray you listen and that you hearken diligently because it's the voice of the Lord. I'm not the Lord, but he lives in me and he tells me what to say. He gives me what to give to y'all and these things are proceeding out of the living waters. That's the reason these living waters come up in my mouth all the time because I have a well in me of living water. And it's 19 years of this well He's just been filling me with the word of God and the truth of God and the eternal things. It's eternal things. What I sell in my storehouse with God is the eternal things of God. And I want, look, I'm going to start crying. I want you to stand with me in my lot. At the end of days, would you do that? For those of you that have been faithful, and looking at the channel and even if you disagree with me on some things because you don't understand yet there's some things that i've said that y'all don't quite understand and a couple of you the lord told me you were thinking about not um subscribing because you disagree but don't don't do that yet because we don't know everything just because we think we know everything we don't and um there's so much that we have took in that is not true that we have to get this the, the teachings of men out of us and we have to get the teachings of christ in us that's the reason he's wanting us to do matthew he's wanting us to read matthew mark luke and john everything written in red because that's jesus it's all jesus don't worry about anybody else in the bible for now just only get jesus in you okay because he wants to do visitation he wants to come and do visitation with you and he wants to raise you up and he wants to even invite you to come. We're going to have revival. I was wanting to pay your, the way for one person to be able to come out. You can stay here at my home. We, we'll have revival. It, we'll do the works of the Lord. It might could be a vacation for you. The Lord has got his eye on a few of you. And 
And I know some of you live in other countries, but it doesn't matter. Get your visa. Make sure you have your traveling papers because the Lord may invite you to come and help in this lot with the harvest. The Lord is great, and He and He's going to have me do impartation on people and baptize them in the seven spirits of the Lord so they will be able to operate doing the works that Jesus did even more so. But first, we got to get this foundation laid, and we've got to get everything cleaned up that's not of Him and these sicknesses that y'all have. They've got to be pulled out and plucked out by the root because they're rooted in, and we got to get them out, and we got to judge those spirits. We got to get y'all set up, so let's keep going, okay? Okay, so for I say unto you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, that's like the teachers of this day, like people in the churches, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God. These are scribes and Pharisees, are those that keep the word in word only but they have not the power of god they don't do the word they know the word and they put hard burdens on us to keep but they themselves don't keep it so the scribes and the pharisees in jesus's day was not a good thing there was only one scribe or one pharisee that he even really talked with and, and liked and that was nicodemus but even nicodemus got up and walked away and did not do what Christ asked him to do. So I don't know if Nicodemus ended up getting to go to heaven or not. I, I just don't know what happened to him. But most all scribes and Pharisees uh, find their way in hell. The scribes and Pharisees in Jesus' day, I'm sure all of them went to the devil. They would not receive him. Most of them. I would say 98% of them did not receive him. And 98% of the world, no, he just corrected me, it's 96.5% uh, of the world, Three and a half, only 3.5% of all mankind is going to believe in Christ. And about a half a percent of those are going to still fall away, even though they believed. They're never going to come into their true salvation because they're not going to get rid of sin out of their life because they love their darkness and their sin. So only about 97% of I mean, only 3% of all humanity uh, is going to end up being saved. That's the reason Jesus said, for very few find the kingdom. Very few find the way. So it's not most go to heaven. No, they don't. Most go to the devil. Um, that's bad, you know. Uh, so we confess, Father, that let us be righteous so we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20. Uh, verse 21, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, now listen to this. This is crazy because, you know, I had a, some witches that accused me of murder because I used the word and God judged them and sentenced them to hell. They died and went to hell. So their family tried to take me to court and they were trying to say that I was a killer. But listen what Jesus says. Um... Thou, you've heard that it says, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. So it's not that if we killed, let's say, because the Bible says, Suffer not a witch to live, you know. And so if a witch is coming after you, are you going to lose the word on them? I just speak the word. The angels are the ones that go cut them down. I don't command angels. They just hearken to the word of God. And you know what? They'll hearken to you speaking the word of God too. And if you would get up every day and loose the three-stranded cord of Ecclesiastes against Satan and bind him and his imps and his demons and devils and pull down any, any uh, principalities that are ruling over you, all you have to do is say, I pull you down all principalities and powers that are ruling over me and my spouse or me and my family and i raise up uh, the rock of ages the ancient of days the great i am the first and the last and i lay myself on the rock i pull down all altars of men all stacked stones of demons and devils and false stone i pull all that down and i raise up the rock of ages 
and then bind bind those powers in the three stranded court of Ecclesiastes. You could just loose these three scriptures that Jesus loosed on Satan. It, and it, we don't have to understand them. It doesn't matter what it means as long as we lose those three scriptures or any three scriptures against Satan. It doesn't matter what the scriptures are. One time I had a principality that landed on my roof. And um, Jesus told me, he said, open up your Bible and start reading in red. Because red is the blood. And I just read it. And it didn't matter what I read. That thing cowered back. It, it cowered back and it left. And that was one. Of, that was a, a prince demon over death. It was one of the strongest spirits I've ever encountered, ever. When it came in, I was just shaking and my teeth were chattering and fear just engulfed in my room. But Jesus Christ, and, you know, Jesus was stood right beside me. He could have just rebuked that spirit, but he didn't. He told me to get my Bible and to read in red. And that's what I did. So this reading in red, don't you doubt it. It is the blood of Christ. It is the blood. The whole Bible is his whole flesh body. But, um, and it's his word, the spoken word. But written in red is his blood. And this is why he wanted us, because he wants you filled up with him, with his blood. <laughs> okay. Where are we at? We were in 21. Okay, so uh, if we um, are angry with our brother without a cause, then we shall be in danger of the judgment. So right now, we confess, Father, if we have any anger towards anyone that's ever hurt us, we release them now. And we choose to love all people, even ourselves, in Jesus' name. We decree it, we declare it, we lose it to go forth. And, and he says, don't call people a fool. You can be in judgment of hell, hellfire, danger of hellfire. So yesterday I had to repent for saying that word fool. Um, therefore, if you, and listen to this one. This was so crazy. Oh my gosh. Verse 23. He says, therefore, so he's continuing on about this being a ha hater of your, the brethren, that you'd be in danger if you hate somebody. Listen what he says. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has ought against you, you have to leave your gift before the altar and go your way first and be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer thy gift. Now, he's saying we have to go to the person that we that had ought. It, he said that... Uh, if you remember your brother that had ought against thee. So somebody that has ought against us, that means that they're mad at us. We, can, if we lose our tithes, like we, we get paid and we lose our tithes, we can't even enter into the promise of Malachi 3, 10 and 12 if someone is angry with us. If we our brother has ought with us, like if we've hurt someone, we have to make it right. We have to, even if we don't feel angry towards them and we've repented and we're not angry and we don't have bitterness and we have no unforgiveness, but they are angry. That's what the scripture says. If they, are, if they have ought against us, we still have to leave our gift. We don't give it. We have to go and be reconciled to our brother. So what we have to do, what he's saying here is we have to love them. We have to, we have to pull them back out of that where they have ought against us. We we have to release a blessing over them. So right now, if you have ought against me, I release the blessings of the Lord to come upon you. And if you, you have ought with your spouse right now, Father, we release the blessings of the Lord to come on our spouses. And if they have ought against us, Father, we pull them back out of the fire, Lord, and we bless them and we send arrows of love. We shoot our bow and arrows of love to go into the hearts of those that have ought against us. So let them not have ought against us, Lord. And now we can release our gift. And now we ask you, Lord, that when we give our tithes now and our offerings, that you'd bless everything that we give because we, our brother has no ought against us and we have no ought against our brother. In Jesus' name. This is powerful. These are the truths of Christ. So a lot of things, he, I hear him saying and uh, that he, uh, and I was, going, I was checking my notes too because he had told me that this morning, but he's reminding it to me. 
I hear him saying that many of you have been in a cycle of where you're giving, but you're not seeing any good come out of it. But some of y'all are in war with your spouses, and uh, some of y'all are being a satanic ritually abused by your spouse where they constantly speak hell's language in your hearing and they speak the devil talks through them and spirits are moving through them and um so you are living in really hard tribulation right now and you're sowing and you're giving but you're not seeing much come from it and you're sick in your body and there's a reason the, the it's something to do with uh the spouse the spouses and the people that you're involved with and it's not just for people that have spouses but people that you're involved with people can be sneaky snakes and if uh you have a sneaky snake in your life or an unsaved friend or loved one and uh, they uh, curse constantly with their mouth it can hold your blessings up it can tie up all your blessings so uh, what we need to do is we need start we we need to repent for them ask God to forgive them for they don't know what they're doing you do your part to be reconciled to your brother but but we can't force them to receive Christ and we can't force them to do what is right so we just have to do our part on what is right and so right now i'm going to pray a special prayer for you that you be released out from under anything that's holding up your finances and your in your offerings and your tithes father right now in your blessings right now father in the name of jesus i break the powers of satan off of my friends here that are looking at the channel if anybody has any kind of something that is stealing away their blessings because satan comes to steal kill and destroy whatever's hindering whatever's blocking them from uh, receiving your blessings and to enter an end to where you said you would open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we would not be able to contain it that you would rebuke the devourer for our namesake whatever is causing it and the people that are in our lives that are doing these wicked things that are causing us to lose our blessings right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we ask you to forgive them for they know not what they do. But we ask you, Lord, to uh, judge sheep by sheep. And we ask you to bless us um, in this hour and do not let Satan rob us. And everything that Satan has stolen from us now, Father, I lose the scripture to where it says, if you know who the thief is, you can request a sevenfold retribution payback. Well, Jesus already told us who the thief is he says satan come but for to steal kill and destroy so even though men are the ones that do the things it is satan that who sinned from the beginning and it is satan who uses them as vessels so satan is the one that's responsible and now we come to you by faith and we ask you now lord to cancel out all of our debts release our blessings and for Satan to have to pay us back for everything he has stolen from us up to this point. Make him give us back sevenfold, even to his whole house, to everything be paid back for everything he has taken from us. And I hear the Lord saying for the last six years, uh, even the seventh year. See, seven years is a jubilee. Seven years is a time. And on the seventh year, everybody was released from all of their trespass, all of their debts, all of their bondage. On the seventh year, everybody's released. And um, then the Lord blesses you for three years in a row. So right now, um, Father, I ask you to uh, set up the release. This is the seventh year. I don't know why i'm saying this is the seventh year but it's the seventh year and it's also the beginning of the next seven this is the truth um the moedim in time we're the set is the seventh year and it's also the beginning of the next seven so we're coming this fall will be the start of the next seven and uh it may have already started but we come to the end we're at the end of a seven year stretch and now we're fixed to be at the beginning of another seven and father i just pray for the blessings to come upon us that everything satan has stolen now i decree i decree the prophet i decree standing in the office of a prophet that satan must repay us sevenfold for everything he has stolen from everything he stole from our grandparents everything he stole from our parents everything he stole uh in our former marriages for those that have been married more than once everything that he stole 
from our children, everything he stole from our bodies, everything he stole from our soul. We call it to come back, every layer of our soul that has been out in the world where we've had soul ties. We call the layers of our soul back. We put it under the blood. Every thought that we've had in our head, we put it under the blood. Every Everything that, every uh, memory and time that Satan has arrested and that he holds and pushes those buttons to try to bring us back to bad times in our life, we bring, we call those back into the, to us and we put it under the blood and Satan is not allowed to keep anything that is ours. Everything that that um, reptilian, demonic dragon, serpent has stolen from us, Father, right now, I decree and declare Satan must repay us back. Everything that he has stolen, that you will acquire it according to your word. We loose it to go forth now and where any two will touch and agree on this, you said you would give us whatsoever we ask you for. So right now, if anyone would agree that they want to be paid back sevenfold for everything the enemy has stolen from them, all they have to do is agree now, agree now that they want that retribution payback, even all the way back through their generations. Everything that Satan had did to their grandparents, their great-grandparents, and all the way back to Adam, everything that the enemy has stolen out of your family, away from you. Now, we request that the great God Jehovah in the courts of heaven this morning, Jesus, we come through you the door, and we, and I intercede for these people, Father, and I ask you this morning, Father, I come before you, and I ask you to bless these people. Curse them not. Bless them, Lord. Undo the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and put the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 on them because they're diligently hearkening now to the voice of the Lord, their God, and they're obeying your commandments. And I ask you, Lord, to stop that dragon in his uh, steps and to force that dragon to have to give them back, force that beast to have to give them back everything that's been stolen from them. And I pray, Father, that you will teach them how to get their pots and bowls ready to receive the harvest, the wealth transfer, and everything that the enemy had stolen from their forefathers and their uh, family members, and that they will be the keeper of the vineyard. They will be the ones that receive the blessing. They will be the one that will, uh, will be the one that you trust, that will be able to manage the finances for the kingdom. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, for supernatural download for a financial blessing and financial harvest on the people, Father. I pray that you will not let the enemy rob them no more. And I pray that they will not have aught with anyone. So therefore, their tithes and offerings as they give will be received by you. And that you will open the windows of heaven. You will rebuke the devourer for their name's sake. And you will pour them out a blessing. They will not even be able to contain it. And I pray uh, this this morning in the name of Jesus forever and forever for anyone that would ever look at this video in any uh, moment in time and even after time stops when we enter into the eternal into the millennial kingdom that this prayer will always be and that satan will always have to give us back everything he ever steals from us that though he may come out one way but he shall have to flee seven different ways and then i feel this right here on the wrist where the chains are breaking I can feel it burning, going around. Yes, it, it, for when Satan comes out to rob us, that let it be known now, and I feel the glory of God on my head, let it be known now that any time he tries to steal, and he may get through, uh, but he will have to pay it back sevenfold. He will. Everything he steals from us, he has to give it back sevenfold. And sevenfold is many more than seven times. So every penny that Satan steals from us, he must give it back sevenfold. Every dime, every uh, time he breaks something that's ours or tears up a mechanical thing or whatever he does, anytime he makes us lose an appointment, lose a, a God moment, lose a job, anything that it, Satan had orchestrated and he entered in and used men as vessels to destroy or he sent out his demon hordes to steal kill and destroy now satan has to pay us back we decree it we declare it we loose it it is the word of god and so we loose it in jesus christ i remind y'all what he said he said i did not come to destroy the law 
I did not come to destroy the prophets. No, we are living epistle. We are the prophets. Whatsoever we lose and whatsoever we say, he upholds it. So if you agree with me this morning, the Lord's going to uphold this for you. And he's going to give it to you. One day, we will stand together and talk about it what all God has done for us, because he's going to be bringing us from this point A where we're at now all the way to uh, the end. And it is going to be good. We're going to have a good ride. No matter, there's going to be a thousand falling on our left and 10,000 on our right, but it's not going to come near us. For with our eyes, we're going to look and behold, and we're going to see the reward upon the wicked. But we're going to rise and shine for our light has come. I was in my prayer closet not too long ago and I was in a really dark time. It's about maybe six or eight weeks ago and I was having a real bad week that week. And uh, But I was in my prayer closet and I stayed in there just crying and praying. And it was so dark and I felt gloomy and dark. And you know what? In that black darkness in that prayer closet, Jesus Christ spoke to me. And you know what he said? He said, arise and shine for your light has come. I couldn't see any light. I couldn't feel any light. And I feel him now touching my hand. And he tells you this, arise and shine for your light has come. And it's going to start getting brighter and brighter for you. I promise. So we leave our gift. We go reconcile ourselves to our brother. We come back and now we are received. And we can go ahead and be blessed. And also, he wants me to lose this. Matthew 25. It says, Agree with thine adversary quickly while you are caught in the way with him. See, this means that if you have sinned, anytime you sin, that's the reason we have to repent very quickly. When we sin, we have to live. Uh, Sid Roth says he lives in a mode of repentance. That means if, when he, if he sins, he picks himself up really quick and says, Lord, excuse me. I just said something that wasn't right, or I just sinned, forgive me. So we live in a mode of repentance, and we won't have to really activate this verse 25 of Matthew 6. But if you accidentally do fall into a sin, or if you've got sins that are rooted in that we don't know what they are yet, um, and God's chipping away at these things now, he says to agree with your adversary quickly while you are in the way with him. At least at any time he deliver thee over to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. And this means a spiritual prison, not a real prison. But he says, Verily I say unto you that you will not come out of this prison until you pay the very last thing, until you've paid, paid your debt. And um, so what we have to do if we know we have sinned or if we've been living in a state of sin, we should confess our sins right now, agree with our adversary because he's already caught us um, and, and we'll be released. We'll be released uh, from it. So um, we just decree now this morning, Father, if anyone has any sin, they're living an active sin lifestyle right now, I intercede for them and I ask you, Lord, do not turn them over to the adversary. Forgive them of their sins, Lord. And now I pray you'll bring them out of spiritual prison. I hear the Lord say many of you are in spiritual prison. Some of you are in spiritual prison. You can't even read the Word of God. You're not even hungry for the Word of God. You care not for it. It's because you're in spiritual prison because the adversary's already got you arrested. You're already arrested. You're already cast into spiritual prison. That's the reason you're not hungry for the Word of God. It's because you're living active sin. You're living in active sin. You're not confessing your sins to the Lord. But from this day forward, He wants you to confess your sins. Confess them. Every time you sin against God, he did not come to condemn you, but at the same time, he gives you conviction over sin. If we have not a conviction that we've sinned, we are like a reprobate. Our mind is reprobate. Our heart is seared. So we have to pray, Lord, don't let our heart be seared. Don't let us have a reprobated mind. Let us be convicted if we have sinned against you so we can repent and you can repent of your sins seven times 70 every day and if anybody sins against you forgive them seven times 70 so it goes both ways all right um he says now we're going to be getting into something on um adultery um so for y'all that are married if your spouse is committing adultery or if you're living in adultery and then, too, I hear God say that even if they're not committing real adultery, but they're committing spiritual adultery, 
that they were once a believer and now they've walked away from God. They're committing spiritual adultery. Um, but for those that have never been saved and they are totally fornicating and they're fornicating against God. They will not get to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He will not be able to protect them during the great day of the Lord when God's judgments come on the wicked sinners. He will not be able to protect them because they would not receive the love of the truth and to come out of sin because they are, they are totally committing fornications against Jesus Christ. But for the bride of Christ, we're not fornicating against him. So let's go ahead and read. But I say unto you that whosoever... No, wait. You have... You have heard, verse 27, um, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already in his heart. That's even if you look at an ulterior gospel. If you're not looking at the true gospel, let's say you're looking at Hinduism or Buddhism or you're looking at Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness or anything like that, that is also a woman. You know, all these different ministries, these different churches are called women to God. So we can't even look on another, uh, I guess you'd call it another gospel. Okay, let's just keep going. And if thy right, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell so um right now father i consecrate our eyes let us only look on you jesus let us only look to your gospel let us not look uh, to any other gospels and also lord let us not look on any person's flesh to desire their flesh let us live in the Spirit, Father. We consecrate our eyes to you now in the name of Jesus. These living waters are just pouring out of my mouth. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. We dedicate our hands to you, Lord. Let us not touch anything that's unclean. And we... We also pray we prevent the transference of spirits that if our spouses are committing adultery against us, that we forbid the transference of their demons and their spirits to us. We bind their strong men, Lord, and we pray that you will bring our, our uh, spouses out of adultery in Jesus' name. And it has been said, whosoever shall put away his spouse, it says wife here, but I'm going to say spouse, whosoever put away his wife, spouse, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, except for fornications, will cause her to commit adultery. And whoever shall marry one that is divorced commits adultery. So right now, in the name of Jesus, um, Father, I pray, Lord, that if our spouse is committing adultery on us, Lord, that we do have the right to get a divorce. Right here, Jesus is saying, if you know for certain that your spouse is in an affair, they're committing adultery, having a sexual affair with another person, they have broke the oath of the marriage bed. They have broke the covenant of, and you'll you'll as long as they are cheating, you're going to have hell and a dark shadow over you. So you have to make a choice. If they're not going to give their life to the Lord, if they're not going to repent, if they're going to continuously do whoredoms, you've got to make a choice. It would be better to put them away and let God deal with them if they're doing this thing than to stay in a situation like that because it is so hard to fight all those demons and devils it can actually make you sick and satan will try to kill you he will try to kill you if your spouse is actively committing adulteries and doing fornications uh, it is going to be so hard for you to stand up against that stuff so i would suggest you take this to jesus privately and pray to him and ask him what he wants you to do because he may actually want you to get out of a of a bad marriage 
especially if the Lord did not ordain your, that marriage to start with. If you think maybe you married this person by mistake and you didn't hear from God, you married a person without even really taking it to the Lord, and you don't even know if this marriage, but if this marriage was ordained by God and you think your spouse is committing adultery against you, then uh, you can, and I can feel that right here on the, where the chains are too, on the arm of God. It's like a bee sting. It just feels like it's a bee sting. You see, it's not a good thing if a spouse is committing adultery on you. Uh, they're cheating on, against you and God, and they break in the oath. That, see, y'all make an oath. Marriage is an oath, and there's a great blessing that comes on a marriage and on the marriage bed, and it's holy. And if you are saved and you are sanctified and holy and your spouse is not saved, then they are sanctified through because of your salvation. But if they are continuously, if they're committing adultery and they won't quit and they're not saved, you you're gonna have to remit their sins up that's the only way i can see it if you're not going to divorce them you've got to remit their sin you got to go before the lord and say lord um please forgive them of their adulteries i forgive them and i want you to forgive them and i pray you bless my marriage and you heal my marriage and you you bring them out of this and the lord will do whatever you ask him to do on this but you do have the choice you don't have to stay in a bad marriage, all right? Again, he says, you have heard that it had been said of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. See, marriage is an oath. But I say to you, swear not at all, neither by heaven nor for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by the head, because thou cannot make one hair white or black. But let your communications be yes and no, for whatsoever is more than these comes evil. So he's saying to don't, don't make oaths with people that you can't keep. Don't make an oath before God that you can't keep. Don't enter into oaths uh, in a and I hear the Lord say, be careful of your conversations because talking too much with people will cause you to lose things out of your mouth that you really shouldn't. Anything more than yes or no do cometh evil because we lose it with our mouth. We don't realize. To, we should be very slow to speak and very quick to hear. You have heard it been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that res resist not the evil. That means if somebody does evil to you, just let, they've done done it, so just let that, let it be. And um, when they do, he says, if they smite you on the right side, turn the cheek and let them hit the other side. Do you remember when King David in 2 Samuel 14 through 20, he was running from Absalom? It's chapter 14 and chap, all the way through chapter 20, 2 Samuel. David was running from Absalom. And when he was going up the mountain of God, there was a man named Shemi that was going up on the other side of the mountain, and he was cursing David, blaspheming the Lord and cursing David. And David's men, his mighty men of valor, came out and said, let us kill him for cursing you. And David said, no, it may be, let him curse, because it may be that the Lord has him to do this so that I will be blessed. And we find that Jesus teaches this right here. He says to don't do an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but resist not the evil. So when somebody is cursing you and condemning you and saying all manner of evil against you falsely or no matter what they're doing, he says just to let them. So we can't override men's wills. So if a man is doing wrong against you, you just take it to the Lord and don't try to be wicked and do an eye for eye and a tooth for tooth. That's witchcraft. Just let the people do what they're going to do and then you take it to the Lord. You forgive them and God will heap coals of burning fire on their head if they. you just do what your part, what you're supposed to. Um, he said if anybody takes you to law and tries to take away what is yours, just let them have it. 
He says, let them have your, their, back then they would sue a man just for his clothes. He said to give it to them. So if somebody takes you to law, whether it be law in the church uh, before God or whether it be law of men, just go ahead and give them what they ask for. Let's say you get a speeding ticket and you get a ticket for like $100. Just go ahead, instead of trying to curse that police officer that gave you the ticket and you go home and try to do witchcraft on them, don't do that. Just go ahead and pay the ticket and let God reward you back. He'll give you double for all your trouble. Always remember that. You get double for your trouble. Always remember that. So if you get a speeding ticket, and I remember one time I did get a speeding ticket, and it the Lord had been telling me for a whole year, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, and I just kept speeding 15 miles over the limit everywhere I went. And finally I got a ticket, and I heard Jesus Christ say, I've been telling you for over a year to slow down this ticket. You'll have to receive and pay because the man was coming up. And I ended up having to pay that ticket, but you know what? I slowed down after that. That's been years ago, like eight years, nine years ago, and I'm still slowing. Like, I don't speed anymore. It changed me having to pay that money. But And on that one, I don't think he gave me double for that. The only double portion I got back off that ticket is that I learned a lesson. I received a lesson, but I had to pay for it, you know. But um, So just know this, anytime somebody, uh, you're required to have to pay something by law, they come against you and force you to do it. Just go ahead and do it, and the Lord will make that back up to you on the on the back end. All right, uh, we're almost done with Matthew chapter five, and I'm gonna uh, stop the video after that. So let's just move forward really quickly from verse forty one to forty eight. I'm gonna read those, and then we'll pray. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him two miles. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow from thee. Don't turn them away, and I'm going to say don't turn them away empty-handed. If you have it, give it. Even if it's your last $5, just give it. The Lord will bless thee greatly. He'll give you a hundredfold in situations like that. If somebody needed food or they needed something and you barely had, just give it. The Lord will bless thee. And remember Proverbs 19, 17. He that has pity upon the poor lends unto the Lord, and when the Lord comes, he will repay thee everything thou hast given and remember when the god repays thee he repays thee by some 30 60 and a hundred fold okay so uh, give to him that asks thee and from him that wants to borrow don't turn them away empty-handed let them borrow you have heard that it had been said thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies but i say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you and this is a hard one, but we have to do it. And I learned how to do it because witches were coming after me like crazy when I first came out in 2017. It's when the Lord birthed me. Uh, I was one of the earlier men child, men child to be born. Um, and uh, the witches, they came and all hell came against me. There was millions at one time. I asked the Lord he, it, uh, because they were just uh, stabbing me through. Like I could feel them like sticking uh, pokers in my eyes and uh, ice picks in my ears and busting my teeth out with the bat and the spirit like they were coming against me so hard I was like Lord what is all this he said this is all hell coming against you and I was like well how many is it and he said it's millions and millions I was like oh God he said you overcome them by the blood of the lamb and the words of your testimony and I would just speak the word of my testimony and the blood of the lamb well my testimony is the whole word of God it's not my salvation story our testimony is the whole word of God in any scriptures that we can remember. So I would just release scriptures that I could remember. And I would uh, speak on who Jesus was. And I would loose the blood. And it would just, it would bind them and they would go away. And so he taught me how to fight, you know. And, and I had to fight all them demons from hell all those years. And so now it's been se uh, seven years. It was 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And now we're in 24. I'm going on the eighth year of walking as a man child with the Lord. So, um, because Sunday, and I praise you, Father. Let's just keep going. Um, where was we at? Okay. Love your enemies. Yes. You have to love your enemies. Bless your enemies. So I would pull back a bow and arrow and I would shoot love tipped arrows into my enemy's camp. He would tell me to do that. And I would send the spirit of the fear of the Lord to them. 
and I would send the word and I would say the Lord loveth thee um, and I send forth the love of God unto thee and I would fight those witches with love I'm telling you and it they would it would just make them that it would take all their strength away and another thing too always say this if the enemy's coming after you and you know it's witches all you have to do is say um, thou has not the peace of God they all their strength falls away when you remind them they have no peace because see Christ is our peace and the peace of God resteth upon us and they have no peace and you can remind them that that and you can say these things that, that yeah, thou has no peace and they would just fall when I would say that um, so when they try to curse you just rise up and say the causeless curse cannot take a root it cannot fly it cannot land it cannot it might fly but it can't land and it can't take root and I believe that's a Proverbs uh, chapter 26 and verse 3 the causeless curse cannot take a flight or cannot land um, so do good to them that hate you and pray for those which despitefully use you and persecute you those that abuse you pray for them if you're in a bad marriage and your spouse is mistreating you just keep continually pray for them and remit their sins up to the Lord but if other people are coming against you even witches and warlocks uh, just pray that uh, for God to send the spirit of the fear of the Lord upon them that he would heap coals of the baskets of coals of burning fire upon their head because that is from the mercy seat the basket of the coal of fire from it, that he heaps on their head is is from the mercy seat it'll try to it'll it'll give them uh it'll put angels in their life to try to get them to be saved so we pray salvation on our enemies that they would repent and be saved and then there will be a time when god will raise you up if you're in a lot of witchcraft that he will raise you up to say suffer not that witch to live and that he will take their life from them if they keep on after you have done your part on trying to get them saved if they still will not give their life to the lord then and then and after that is when he will take them away all right so we have to do our part first um he says so that you will be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust and he told me this morning that god is not in hell because there's people saying god is everywhere and in all times and places no he's not in hell god's not in hell and all those that live on the earth have a measure of his grace and a measure of his light and he does send rain on the just and on the unjust but once they die and once they go to hell all his grace is removed all his life is removed from them he is not in them the only part of god that may be in hell i hear him saying is written in black not in red but written in black in the fiery pit that they're down in the word of god to where they were a sinner is written around them in the fire in in black but it is judgment anytime you see the word of god written in black in the spirit around a person that is judgment if you see it written in red that is a blessing the word of god is written in red around us especially after reading this today don't you doubt it uh it is written around you and around your house and the angels can see all the way from the high heaven who has the word of god written around them the word of god's written around you if you've sitting this long through this video the word of God's written around you because we are loosening it. We're loosening it right now. Everything I'm doing is loosening this word to come and be written around your house. So if we love those which only love us, what reward do we have? Even the publicans do the same thing. But we should love those that are the unlovables. We should try with them. Okay? And if you salute your brother only, what do you do more than others do even the publicans do that jesus said so um be ye therefore perfect even as your father in heaven which is perfect well being perfect to god is to love your enemies to bless your enemies salute your enemies do not curse them so we don't curse anyone we're not the children that bring forth the curse but we bring forth the blessing all right, so I've given y'all everything, and um, we read Matthew chapter 5 today, and now let's just pray, and I'm going to let y'all go, and I'm so sorry these videos are so long, but I'm trying to give y'all what Christ gave. 
And after this, I'm going to try to start uploading a little short. Every time he gives me a word, I'm just going to upload it. It might be a one minute or a two minute or whatever instead of doing these long things. But he wanted to jump y'all off this morning uh, reading the four Gospels, reading in red, and proclamating the Word of God to teach you how to do it so you'll know how to do it. And um, I'll be doing it too. He's asked me to do it too. So uh, we'll join together, be all in one mind and one accord in unity. And wherever we're in unity, God is in our midst. So let's be unified so we'll be strengthened, okay? Um, I love you very much. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you, to give you an expected end. And we praise Jesus Christ, our high priest and high king. And we decree and declare that we are a kingdom of priests under the Melchizedek order, Melchizedek order, that Jesus is our high priest and our high king. And we are subject to him in all things. And we invite Jesus Christ to live in our vessel we invite the Father to live in our vessel, and we invite the Holy Spirit to live in our vessel and to baptize us in the seven spirits of the Lord, Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2, and that we shall judge righteous judgments. We shall not judge by the seeing of our eyes or the hearing of our ears, but we shall judge righteous judgments according to the Spirit, that God is the Spirit. He requires us to worship Him in truth and spirit, and we Choose to worship God in truth and spirit. Be every whit whole. Be every whit whole. Father, I pray for them now. If they have anything lacking, I pray that you will make up to them what it is they would have want of and need of according to your riches and glory. And Father, right now, every sickness, every disease, I curse it at the root. I speak to those uh, demon spirits in the heavenly realm and those rooted in lies of the enemy and the sicknesses and diseases of the earth that had taken root in their bodies. And I curse those roots. I command them to be thou plucked up by the root. Be thou removed. Go plant themselves into the ocean. Them, oh, uh, diseases. Jesus Christ said, speak to that mountain. Tell it to be thou plucked up. Tell it to be thou removed. Tell it to go plant itself into the ocean. If you do not doubt it, it will obey you. So right now I speak to those diseases, those sicknesses, those autoimmune disorders. I speak to everything in the innermost belly in the loins area even in the female body parts. And I say, be thou plucked up, you foul thing. You, I curse you at the root. I cut you out. I command you to be thou plucked up. You have to go. I break your powers. I take the sword of the spirit and I bind these demons in a three-stranded court of Ecclesiastes. You have no power. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou worship. Thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and obey all his commandments. And thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God nor his uh, children. In the name of Jesus, I bind Satan and I bind them demons and devils and those lying spirits and those spirits of infirmity. I bind you in the three-stranded court of Ecclesiastes and I put the blood of Jesus on these children and I send forth the living waters and I decree and declare that by Jesus' stripes they are healed. And I speak healing over them. And now I take the keys to the body parts room. And I unlock the body parts room. And Father, I pray you'll send the holy angels now to go and get the new body parts. And to take it and to give it to my friends. I command their old body parts that are decayed and rooted and rotten in sickness. I command them old body parts to be thou plucked up, be thou removed. Go now in the name of Jesus. And now I send forth the new body parts to go and take that place. And we seal it in the blood and in the truth of God's word. For you said, whatsoever I loose on this earth, you will loose it from heaven. And I loose forth the blessing now to go and overtake them. I loose the anointing that drives out and breaks the curse of the yoke of sin and death. The anointing is what breaks the yoke of the curse. And I loose the anointing now on my friends, on those that would watch this, I lose the anointing to go now to drive the curse of sin and death out of their house, out of their bodies, out of their tent. We invite Jesus to come in and be our tent, our tabernacle, uh, 
the temple of the living God, to, to, for Jesus to be on the altar of our heart, for the rock of ages we shall stand on. We renounce all others and all demonic spirits and strongholds and sicknesses and diseases, and we take up Jesus Christ. We proclamate this on today, and we ask you to seal it. Oh, I feel the glory of God. We ask you to seal it, Lord. I ask you to seal them. Remember earlier, he's wanting me to remind you, when you read Matthew chapter 5, and you proclamate it like we did, we just did it, that he's sealing you, that he sent a seal. We'll go over that later, but it was a seal that he gave. He sealed you up in his quiver, and he put a seal on you. And the, he, he was allowed to do it for one of the verses we lose. I don't remember which verse it was. Maybe you will remember. But he put a seal on you. And I believe it is written in one of those scriptures. We can look up the word seal and it will take us straight to that scripture. But he sealed you. So you are sealed in the Lord. All right. I love you. May you be upper room hand of God. Signing off. Love you. Bye.